I'm Rob LaCurie, a senior editor at Gold Derby here with Paul Sims, showrunner on What We Do in the Shadows. First of all, Paul, congrats on the Emmy nominations. What We Do in the Shadows is still an Emmy powerhouse, nominated in Best Comedy Series. What are your thoughts and how did you find out? Um, uh, thank you. Uh, I was surprised. I, 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 uh, I don't know. I didn't think our moment had passed, but it was such a surprise the first time we got nominated. I was su surprised again, so I didn't wake wake up early or anything. But I was very gratified that um, uh, besides the show and the writing nominations for Stephanie and Sarah, that our wardrobe designer finally got nominated, our stunt person, our sound team. Um, that was very gratifying, especially especially the wardrobe person, because, you know, we're basically making this on the same budget as other half hour shows, but we're squeezing every last cent we can out of it. Yeah, I noticed that. And it's not just like a, a comedy series uh, costume category. It's the sci-fi, the sci-fi yeah. category with like all these amazing shows right now with huge budgets to yeah. see your show in there. That is so cool. So cool. Um, you know, I uh, was wondering, you know, given your fascinating background as a creator of news radio, uh, Larry Sanders show, you worked on that Atlanta flight of the Concords. Um, what brought you back originally to working with Jermaine Clement and with Taika Waititi uh, for this show? Um, I think you know, Jermaine and I had worked on flight of the Concords and then I had I'd gone to a screening that he and Taika did of the movie version of what we do in the shadows when it first came out. And I just thought it was really funny. I wasn't smart enough to think, oh, that should be a TV show. But then a few months later, Jermaine said, yeah, we're thinking about making a TV show about it. And I thought, oh, that's that's awesome. Like, uh, you guys are going to be so funny in that. And he's like, no, Tyke and I don't want to be in it. And I was like, well, how's that going to work? Because that's <laughs> what, to me what made the, the movie so great. Um, but then cut to, you know, a year or a few months later and uh, starting to cast and finding the amazing actors we have that are so funny. And it just became its its own new thing. Yeah. Um, season three boasts a very rare approval rating of 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not nice. Oh, that's good. I, I was jealous when you said that to uh who Yeah, you, you got it as well, mate. It's to right, both good. of you. I, All right. that is because when you said that to I think it was John Hoffman, I was like, eh, when well, why does he get that? But no, nah, <laughs> hundred percent. That means nobody dislikes season three. And it, it calls the show scary good, celebrates the cast in incredible chemistry and the strongest writing of the series so far. Um, I was just thinking, you know, how encouraged are you that you put this out there? Because it is hysterical, outrageous, ridiculous. I, I recommend it to friends and I'm like, you just got to give it a chance. It may not be for you, but it is so funny and so witty. How do you feel that it's so embraced by like, the critics get it? It's a, it's a, it's really gratifying. And it's also a surprise. I mean, the whole time we were doing the first season before anyone saw it, we thought it was just, it, it did, it felt, it was felt incredibly silly and childish at times and funny and not the kind of show that gets, that gets noticed or nominated. I mean, it felt like the kind of show that people go like, ah, oh, you should really see it and no one's ever heard of it. So the, the fact that, um, People like it just for being funny because we don't, there's nothing relevant about it and there's nothing, you know, top current, current or political or topical. And we don't really have anything to say um, except silliness. Yeah. I like that. It's so refreshing. Um, the uh, Emmy voters nominated uh, both episodes submitted for consideration in writing wellness center and casino. They're both superb examples of the hysterical, outrageous, ridiculous, and this sub sublime like humor and one line is particularly that I look forward to what was behind uh, generally those particular submissions why and also the six episodes that were submitted for comedy series generally is that a difficult choice to make um yeah it, it is but it's it's you know it, the the I when you start the season you have an idea like oh these two are going to be our Emmy Emmy ones and then when you finish the season you have a completely different idea for us the for me, those two really just stuck out as as both uh, ones that were big and funny, and also ones that people seem to talk seem to talk about, uh, seem to be talking about afterwards. I mean, the casino episode was just uh, fun and big and challenging, particularly shooting that during COVID in a empty, abandoned casino on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls, and the wellness center with uh, Nandor falling into a cult 
of vampires who think they can be human and the very you know that that started out as just the idea we went through so many variations we knew we wanted it to be a cult of vampires who pretended were pretending to be human but we at first we were like well did they live in a ski lodge do they are they outdoorsy and it was sort of it was stephanie and our director yana gorskaya who were like maybe it's a very like 80s Jane Fonda workout they're into aerobics and they're and that sort of informed the rest of it which made it so good and just the uh just just uh Kayvon as Nandor doing the dance routine and stuff like that with was the hair really fun yeah and the hair the whole look yeah oh my god the casino stuff so good with the dirt um and the wellness center I just I could I was beside myself at the end when Jan the, you know, the cult leader in the aerobics center lets all these vampires out as their final test to eschew vampirism. And of course they all burn to death. And she's like, all right, let's start again, tend it to a bat. I just thought that was brilliant. I just wondered like, um, do you get a kick out of the pictures that emanate from the writer's room when you're all trying to work out what the season's going to look like? Like what's that? Yeah, that like? that's, that's one of the most fun parts. The first week or two is just absolutely structureless just anything an idea for a episode an idea for a scene an idea for just some there are some note cards that we put up that are so stupid that we go ah let's just make it laugh we'll keep it up there there's one i i will it's a preview for a future season but there's been a card that's been up there for three years that just <laughs> just says nandor goes to outer space and, oh. and i think we were laughing about it just because it was such a stupid idea but now it looks like we found a way to actually do it so no oh, the, yes. the, the the fun is um uh yeah just the complete silliness and trying to make each other laugh and you know what's really fascinating is you had such an embarrassment of riches because my favorite episode of last season wasn't even included in the submitted episodes because you had so many good ones but mine was cloak of duplication oh. um, that is such a showcase for the actors particularly caven as nandor yes. um so that reminds me, like, what are, I mean, it's a kind of a, an obvious question, but what are your thoughts on the, on the, no pun intended, the killer cast? Because the show wouldn't really maybe be as great as it is without. Oh, those. no, it wouldn't. It, with, I, I do, I wish there were an Emmy category for best ensemble, because I yeah. feel like that's the, that's what the, you know, I, I wish some of our cast had gotten nominations, but I honestly wish they all had. It's just so much fun. They're genuinely funny people. They're genuine improvisers. They're not improvising in that fake TV way where it's a writer standing off screen saying, say this, try this one, try that one. They're actually all listening to each other. And because of the way we shoot in the documentary style, we don't have to worry about, oh, did you say it on this side? We need to cover that side. The camera is swinging around and covering everything. I do, hold it. What was the, there was a first part of your question. Oh, Kayvon oh, doing all yeah. the other characters. The interesting thing about that was, he studied all his cast members, perfected perfect imitations of them, including the voice that just we thought was uncanny. And then we put it on the air and so many people online apparently said, oh, well, they obviously just dubbed the voices of the other cast members. Yes, that's like, what I thought. No, we were like, oh my God, he was too good. That, except for Nadja, the female voice, all of those are Kayvon doing the actual voice. Um, which I, I wish we made it a little worse so people could know what an, uh, uh, an is that accomplishment good? it was. What's that? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah go watch is... it again. This gives everyone an opportunity to go watch Everybody it. Everybody go watch that episode. That... It's a killer. It's an absolute, um, it's such a great episode. And, you know, uh, I hope Kayvon gets nominated next year because he really deserves it. He's such, a... they're all great, but he's my favorite. Yeah. Um, Paul, thanks for your time today. We're going to bring you back right now for a group chat. Sure.